is that the world is facing an unprecedented freshwater crisis of such magnitude that close to two billion people now live in areas of the world that are severely water stressed. That it was possible for us to massively pollute surface water so that we would then turn to overmining groundwater. There are 25 million bore wells in India alone pumping 24-7. We're also massively displacing water, taking it from where it was put by nature, uh, either in watersheds or groundwater, and moving it through pipelines for mass irrigation, flood irrigation, uh, unsustainable agriculture, or moving it to huge megacities where we use it, and in many cases just dump it back into the ocean, often untreated. Our country or society uses its water to produce uh, kinds of exports that uh, are, are kinds of products that are then exported out of the country. About 20% of our daily domestic use is traded away from watersheds. That what we're doing to water is actually helping to create the climate crisis. It's the ground. It's the it's the ground level equivalent of what we're doing in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Half of the hospital beds in, on Earth are now occupied with people with preventable water-borne uh, diseases. More children are killed every day by dirty water than HIV, AIDS, malaria, accidents, and war put together. The global water crisis has become the greatest symbol of inequity in our world, and the creation uh, and, and its greatest indictment of the system of market capitalism and globalization. Just at the moment when we most need responsible governments, when we most need transparency, democracy, and, and uh, responsible public oversight of this crisis, uh, we have found, we are finding, of course, the powerful corporate water cartel has, been emer has emerged to take over every aspect of water for its own profit. Corporations now deliver drinking water and take away wastewater. Corporations put massive amounts of water in plastic and sell it back to us at exorbitant prices. Corporations are bu building new, uh, significant new technologies to recycle our dirty water and sell it back to us as well at, at exorbitant prices. The whole water reuse technology industry is the gr fastest growing part of the water industry, which in, in and of itself is becoming one of the most uh, important industries in the world or in terms of, of, uh, of our stock markets and how much money you can make and which commodities are, are, are uh, you know, most profitable. Water is going to be right up there at the top very, very soon. Uh, and we have uh, massive desalination programs uh, run by, in many cases, nuclear power being planned. On the water front, on the water issue, we are calling for what I call a blue covenant, which really is a covenant of three parts. We need a water conservation covenant, a covenant between people and the earth, when we have to recognize the rights of the earth and the rights of other species to water and that we are just a species like others and that we have to pledge to protect it. We have to have a water justice covenant. Uh, those of us living and working in the global north must pledge to work in solidarity with people in the global south for water justice so that there is water for all, the, the call that for water for all needs to become a reality. Uh, and that means local control of water. We need to work in solidar solidarity with the global south toward that. And the third is a water democracy covenant where we recognize that water is a fundamental right, it's a fundamental human right, and therefore governments are obliged to provide this water as a public service to their people. Um, and and uh, corporations must abandon this field, and we absolutely have to take control back. This then is our task, nothing less than, than reclaiming water as the commons for the earth and all people that must be wisely and sustainably shared and managed if we are to survive. This will not happen unless we are prepared to reject the basic tenets of market-based globalization, the current imperatives of competition, unlimited growth, and private ownership of everything must be replaced by the imperatives of cooperation, sustainability, and public stewardship. Bolivia's president, Evo Morales, says, and I think this is very, very, very wise, our goals need to be to forge a real integration to live well. We say live well because we do not aspire to live better than others. We do not believe in the line of progress and unlimited development at the cost of others and nature. Live well is to think not only in terms of income per capita, 
but cultural identity, community, harmony between ourselves and with Mother Earth. So I end by saying that water could be our teacher. Water could be nature's gift to humanity uh, in order to teach us how to live in harmony with the earth and peace with one another, as opposed to becoming the, the area of conflict, which I, I deeply fear is coming. In Africa, they say, we do not go to water ponds merely to capture water, but because friends and dreams are there to meet us. Thank you.